Hello and welcome to this how to play video for Arcane Arena. Arcane Arena is a deck building tactics game where players train in spellcasting and kung fu to compete in magical martial arts tournaments. It's a game for two to four players and it's played over the course of three rounds, each round having a training phase and then a combat phase. The purpose of the training phase is to hone your skills building your deck with cards of increasing complexity and power, while the purpose of the combat phase is to use the same deck to move around the board, impress the trainers, and defeat your opponents in the arena. At its core, Arcane Arena is a card game, so now I'm going to break down how each card is laid out. This is the card Focus. Focus, like every other card in Arcane Arena, has four values across the center of the card. These values are the cost, buy, move, and attack values of the card. Cost is the Arabic numeral on the left-hand side of the card, and it shows the amount of currency a player needs to generate in the training phase in order to be able to afford to add this card to their deck. Buy is the amount of currency this card generates when it's played in the training phase, and it's the value next to the stylized purse. Move represents the amount of spaces this card allows a player to move in the arena when it is played as a move during combat, and it's next to a stylized running person. Finally is the attack value of the card, which is the amount of damage this card deals when it's played as an attack in the combat phase, and it's next to the little fist. Each card also has a trainer belt at the top of the card, which explains which trainer teaches the players how to obtain the card. It's marked by a color across the top and the center of the cards. And for players with difficulty seeing color, each trainer also has a unique pattern behind the type symbol on the card. Focus is a basic card. Each card also has a type symbol, either an orange diamond or a purple circle behind an orange arc. Focus has the orange diamond, which means it's an ability. Abilities in Arcane Arena can be played for their text boxes at no additional cost. Focus has no special abilities in its text box and that can therefore only be played as a buy, as a move, or as an attack. The other type of card is a spell, so we'll look at an example of that next. An example of a spell is Fireball. Instead of an orange diamond like Focus, Fireball has a purple circle with an orange arc to show its type at the top and center of the card. This arc symbol in Arcane Arena is the discard symbol, and it means that the card's effects require someone to discard a card. In the case of spells, it means that a player must discard another card from their hand in order to play the card for its effect in its text box. Fireball also uses all three special symbols in the game across its central bar. These represent range, damage, and health. Cards with a range symbol, the small crosshair symbol, can be played on targets that are within the designated number of spaces from the players who plays them. Fireball has a range of four. Cards with a damage symbol, which is a small explosion, deal this amount of damage to their target when the card is played for its effect. Fireball deals 3 damage upon being played. Cards with the health symbol, the small heart, have health and can be attacked like players and fable tokens in the arena. These cards remain in play attached to a target until their health reaches 0, until the object they're attached to reaches 0, or until their controller gets knocked out for the round. The range, damage, and health symbols of a card are only used when the card is played for its effect, not when it's played as a buy, move, or attack. The arc symbol is also used in the text boxes of some cards. An example of that appears on the card Jarring Blow. When Jarring Blow is played as an attack and it deals damage to the subject of the attack, that player must discard a card if they're able. Favor tokens and cards with health never have cards in their hand and therefore can never be forced to discard cards. General rule in Arcane Arena is that cards can only be played on your own turn. There's an exception to this rule though. During the combat phase, some cards can be played when a special trigger condition is met. An example of a card like this is Block. To highlight that it can be played on another player's turn, Block has the word Trigger in the center with a bright color behind it. The card's text box then explains the trigger condition that allows the card to be played out of turn. In the case of Block, it says it can be played on being attacked. The card also lays out what it does during the circumstances. Block stops all effects of the attack, including damage. There are a few other keywords in Arcane Arena that are used in the text boxes of cards. These are Asleep, Invincible, Retreat, Short-Lived, Sickened, Slowed, Sustained, Static, and Stunned. An example of a card that uses a few of these keywords is Stasis Field. 
Stasis field uses the keywords asleep, invincible, and sustain. Asleep is a condition which affects players and restricts their ability to play cards. A player that's asleep cannot play cards as moves or cast spells for their effects, and they can only play cards as attacks to attack cards which are attached to them. Players can still play spells as attacks when they are asleep. Invincible is a condition which affects players and makes it so they don't receive damage. Sustain is a keyword for cards. If a player controls a card with the sustain keyword, they must discard a card at the start of their turn or sacrifice the card, putting it in their discard pile. Some cards have effects when they are sustains, and these abilities occur when a player chooses to discard a card to avoid sacrificing their sustain card. The card Opportune Strike uses the keyword Retreat. Retreat means when a player moves out of a space that is adjacent to you. So Opportune Strike triggers and allows itself to be played when it is not your turn, when a person is in a space adjacent to you and then moves out of that space. Crippling Cut has the keyword Short-Lived. Short-Lived is a keyword on cards which causes the player to sacrifice the card to their discard pile at the start of their own turn. Creeping Sickness is a card with the keyword Sickened. Sickened is a condition which affects players. When a player becomes sickened, they must choose to either take two damage or add a wound card to their deck. Decrepify has the keyword Slowed on it. Slowed is a condition which affects players and makes it so the player who has the slowed condition has to treat the move value of each card they play as if it was one lower than its printed value to a minimum of zero. Mage Armor is a card with the static keyword. Cards with the static keyword have health, but they are not sacrificed when they reach zero health. They stay in play attached to the person who they were initially attached to. Stunning Blow has the keyword stunned. Stunned is a condition which affects players. A player that is stunned treats the move value and the attack value of each of their cards as if it was one lower to a minimum of zero. It also forces players to have to discard two cards from their hands to cast spells for their effect. To set up a game of Arcane Arena, each player needs a starting deck, the trader pool needs to be set up, and then the board needs to be set up. To create a starting deck for each player, take four copies of the card move, two copies of the card buy, and two copies of the card attack and shuffle them together. Give one of these decks to each starting player. To set up the trainer pool, first collect all cards with orange, green, brown, blue, red, or black trainer belts and shuffle them together to form the 98 card trainer deck. Next, collect all copies of the card focus and form them into a focus deck. Then collect all copies of the card Wound and form them into a Wound stack. Finally, populate the Trainer Pool. To populate the Trainer Pool, reveal six cards from the top of the Trainer deck and display them. To maintain some diversity in the types of cards that are available in the Trainer Pool, there are two special rules. These two special rules are that there cannot be two cards with the same name available in the Trainer Pool, and there cannot be three cards with the same Trainer Belt. If two cards with the same name or three cards with the same belt are revealed, replace the offending card with the top card of the deck until the trainer pool has six cards that do not break either of these two rules. To set up the board for the combat phase, each player should select a character token and then place their token on one of the four starting spaces denoted by a special color. Next, a favor token should be placed on each of the four corners of the board. Then, randomly decide which player will go first in the first round of play. Then, have each player draw four cards from their deck, and we're ready to start the first turn of the game. There are three rounds of play in Arcane Arena, and each round consists of a training phase followed by a combat phase. In the training phase, players play any number of cards from their hand as buys. When a card is played as a buy, a player adds an amount of currency equal to that card's buy value to their pool of currency for the turn. Then a player has the option to purchase any number of cards with a total cost less than or equal to the amount of currency they've generated on their turn. 
Once a player chooses which cards they're going to purchase, they collect all of those cards from the trainer pool and the focus stack and put them together with all of the cards they played for that turn, then collect all those cards together and put them in a discard pile. If they don't yet have a discard pile, they should create a face-up pile next to their deck of cards. Once the player has collected all of the cards that they've purchased and put them in their discard pile, they should then restock the trainer pool by making sure that there are six cards that do not break either of the two major trainer pool rules. At the end of their turn, a player will choose any number of cards in their hands to keep, discard the rest that they haven't played, and then draw cards from their deck until they have four cards in their hand. As they go through their deck, players will eventually run out of cards to draw for their turn. If a player needs to draw cards but does not have enough cards in their deck, they'll take their discard pile, turn it face down, shuffle that, and that will become their deck. They will draw the remaining cards that they need to draw for the turn from this new deck. In the training phase, players have a set number of turns before the game transitions to a combat phase. In the first training phase, players have three turns each. In the second training phase, each player has four turns. And in the third and final training phase, each player has five turns. Once each player has taken the appropriate number of turns for the round, the training phase ends and the players transition to a combat phase. To transition from the training phase to the combat phase, first take all the cards that were presented in the trainer pool and put them in the trash so that next time we go to the training phase and repopulate the pool, there'll be a fresh pool of cards. The first thing that happens on transition from a training phase to a combat phase is that each player takes their discard pile, their hand, and their deck and shuffles them together, and then they draw four cards. In the combat phase, players have three options when they play a card from their hand. They can play the card as a move, they can play the card as an attack, or they can play a card for the effect, which is the text of the card. If a player chooses to play a card as a move, they can move any number of spaces, or they can move a number of spaces equal to the move value of the card, or any number less than that move value in any direction, including diagonal. Play a card as an attack, a player must be in the same space as something with health, uh, or they must be in an adjacent space to something with health. Just like with movement, attacks can happen diagonally. When a card is played as an attack, it deals damage equal to its attack value to the object that was chosen by the player who played it that is either in an adjacent space or in the same space. While players can never be in the same space as each other, some cards attach to other players. And when those cards have health, they can be attacked. To play a card for its effect, if the card is an ability, the player just announces that they're choosing to play the card for its effect. Then it occurs just like movement and attacking. However, to play a spell for its effect, a player must discard a card, and there is the reminder at the top and center of spell cards that the player must discard a card to play them because it has the discard symbol in front of its type symbol. The goal of most portions of the combat phase is to accrue favor. Favor tokens are placed in the four corners of the board at the beginning of each combat phase. Favor tokens can be collected by knocking out other players or by knocking out favor tokens. To knock out another player, a player deals damage uh, greater than or equal to that player's remaining health. Once that other player is knocked out, they are removed from the board, and the player who delivered the knockout blow gains two favor tokens. Favor tokens have two health each. Reducing a favor token to zero or less health knocks out that favor token. Favor has two uses in Arcane Arena. In combat, players can spend two favor tokens to draw one card at most once per turn in the combat phase. In the training phase, players can spend any amount of favor to gain that much currency for the turn. When the last opposing player on the board is knocked out, the player who caused the knockout blow not only receives two favor tokens for knocking that player out, they also receive one favor token for causing the end of the round. In combat, similar to the training phase, 
Players play any number of cards from their hand in any way that is appropriate, move, attack, or for effect. Once they have played the number of cards they wish to play for the turn, they choose any number of cards in their hand that they'd like to discard, and then draw until they have four cards. Just like in the training phase, when a player needs to draw cards but they don't have enough left in their deck, they shuffle up their discard pile, turn it face down, and draw from that stack. Unlike in the training phase, there is no set term limit for the combat phase. The combat phase ends when only one player, or only one team of players, if uh, playing two-on-two, -two, has players remaining on the board. In the first combat phase, players have 10 health. In the second combat phase, players have 15. And in the third and final combat phase, players have 20 health. Once only one team of players, or only one player, is remaining on the board and the round is supposed to end, the game transitions from a combat phase back to a training phase in the first two rounds. When that happens, you should restock the four corners of the board with a favor token. Each player should be set back on their starting position, and you should repopulate the training pool for the next round. Whoever causes the knockout blow in rounds one or two that ends the combat phase will get to go first in the following round. The round includes both the combat phase and the training phase. In the third and final combat phase, delivering the knockout bow that ends the round causes you and all of your teammates, if you have any, to win the game. Thanks for watching.